I invite you to join me for a two-part series on first some rear railroading and then G-scale railroading. Do a little bit here to give you some overhead perspective of the pictures that you will soon see um, from when I was uh, here on site. Um, this is the uh, engine shed where they currently have the steam engine uh, and repair. It's also where their GP unit was sitting. Um, back here um, was the 060 and tender. Um, I don't remember seeing these other cars back there, so those were gone. Uh, this is the water tower that has the skunk on it. Um, and as you can see, um, they've got a reverse loop here. And um, the other thing that I thought, or a couple other things I'd point out, here is the building that's got the um, shop in it, or I should say the merchandise sales in it. Um, the passenger cars that you saw were lined up around here. Um, and uh, as you can tell, they're not in this shot. So here we have a little bit of history, thanks to Wikipedia, on the California Western Railroad. It was initially begun in 1885 and uh, was run from Fort Bragg and was known as the Fort Bragg Railroad Company. And this is out on the west coast of California. And it only ran a short distance, 6.6 uh, .6 miles. Um, and as you might imagine, it uh, hauled lumber and logs. And uh, as time progressed, um, the railroad continued to, uh, to, own, to haul lumber until uh, 1969. And um, during that time, it had uh, gained more locomotives and more cars and uh, extended the route and um, the route went from uh, Fort Bragg to uh, a town inland called Willits and it was 40 rail miles but uh, if you happen to do a Google search you'll notice that uh, the the route was incredibly curvy um, there were horseshoe curves um, there were um, some pretty steep grades, up to 3.3%, and uh, <laughs> so it was not a uh, not a straight line, straight shot by any stretch. And um, what's kind of cool is uh, the railroad still exists; uh, hasn't been you know torn up. And so let's fast forward to now. Um, the one tunnel that is on the line has suffered some partial cave-ins at this point uh, there is a blockage in the tunnel and so uh, the line is uh, not able to run all the way through from um, Willits to Fort Bragg or vice versa uh, so currently there are um, passenger trains that run you know part way from each end of the line um, it's a little hard to know for sure, but it, uh, there are different reports that um, they expect to have the tunnel um, and the line back in service by the end of, uh, of this year, in fact. Um, additionally, there are um, some interesting plans in the works where they've bought some land. Um, they're looking at uh, relocating or adding a station and doing some um, different upgrades. And um, when I was there um, two, almost two years ago now, uh, one of the local um, papers had talked about how there might be actually some freight service as a possibility in their future. Uh, you know, it's a little hard to know, it might be hearsay, but uh, I think how cool would that be to see this uh, short line, if you will, that's kind of had some real struggles, but has continued to, to ballyhoo on and uh, and maybe maybe they'll uh, gain some some additional traffic, uh, which is pretty cool. Here is a Google Maps view of uh, the western side of California. You can see the ocean, and all the way on the left is Fort Bragg, and that's where the California Western Railroad has its endpoint. And I thought it might be interesting to just show a little bit of uh, kind of where it goes. 
Again, this rail line was originally started to log, and uh, in the space between Fort Bragg and Willits, which is the other town on the right, are um, some pretty rough country and uh, a lot of redwoods, a lot of trees, and that's was the purpose for the rail line. But let's go ahead and come over here to Willits and dive down a little bit and just take a quick look at some of the remains of uh, the rail line. And you can see here in this light gray, um, this is actually the track. And if we come up here um, a little bit, we're gonna go ahead now and change to um, satellite view. And I wanted to show you something I thought was kind of cool. Um, first of all, zoom in here. And you can see uh, here is the headquarters for the skunk train. Now the skunk train is the other end of the same rail line that comes out of Fort Bragg. The skunk train comes from the idea that they were using rail buses back in the 20s that uh, between the smell of the engine exhaust and the heating stoves that burned waste oil, uh, they, they had a pretty powerful stench. <laughs> so they got the nickname skunks, but uh, anyhow, interesting. Um, but in front of the station there are about five tracks. Um, we get up here and you can see what appears to be around 10 tracks wide uh, yard, which is kind of cool. There's a reversing Y that goes off to this side. Got a pile of ties here. And if you want to check this out further, you know, Google Earth is what I'm doing here. But this is what I thought was kind of cool. Here we have a, saw, a sawmill. We've got, uh, looks like uncut lumber to the left here, trees. Um, and then they've got the, the lumber mill over here on this side. And um, the rail yard is in between. And uh, I have no doubt that this is uh, one location that was supported and supplied with lumber uh, from the railroad for many, many years. And uh, maybe not the case now, but uh, still kind of neat to see see at least one industry that remains uh, after all this time. So now I want to switch back to the other view. There we go. And <clears throat> again, if you're a person that enjoys such things, it's fun to use uh, Google Maps or Google Earth to trace rail lines, which in this case, this one continues, even though it looks like it's out of use. It continues to the north and south quite a ways. Um, but it's a lot easier to see the rail line in this view than the satellite because it's it's kind of covered by tree overgrowth. But take a look at this switchback action here. <laughs> Isn't that nuts? Uh, even though there's only 40 miles separating the two towns, uh, I wonder how many miles longer the rail line is. Um, but as you can see, um, it's pretty pretty undulating, follows a couple different creeks. Um, and when you see something like North, North Spur here, um, this probably would have been a lumber camp at one point. Camp Mendocino would be another one. Um, places where there might have been sightings and whatnot that they would have kind of gathered the, the timber and brought it down to load on the train. Um, and again, following the rivers makes sense because, again, this is fairly mountainous terrain and by the rivers is going to be the most reasonable grade. And uh, so that's why you get all this kind of curvy, curvy track work. All right, so now we're back here and I'm going to switch back to the satellite.